All right. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the University of Minnesota Ask a Gopher YouTube Live event. Uh, my name is Katie. I'm a freshman admissions counselor here at the University of Minnesota. Um, I work with students from all over the country and the world, but primarily with students in greater Minnesota. Um, and I have three current students here with me that are also from greater Minnesota that I'll actually have them introduce themselves in a minute. Um, but just so you kind of know what the structure of tonight is going to be, um, I'm going to do a brief uh, kind of description of what the University of Minnesota is um, and then we'll kind of go over to our panelists have them talk a little bit more about student life here and then afterwards I'll kind of wrap up with some reminders um, about the May 1st confirmation deadline that is coming up um, but just to get started I think it's a good thing to talk about the University of Minnesota um, whoever is watching we might have some students that have already confirmed here we might have some students um, that are waiting to confirm to the University of Minnesota people who are just curious um, and hopefully this will be information that is helpful for all of of you. Um, but just again, to, to start generally, uh, University of Minnesota is a Division I Research I University located in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, we, being a Division I University means uh, quite a few things that we'll touch on and being a Research I uh, University also means quite a few things we'll touch on. We are also the land grant university of the state which means that um, quite a few things but two of the most important things are that um, uh, two-thirds of our student body will always be from the state of Minnesota and then also 95% of the research that happens uh, here in the state actually happens on our campus. Um, so lots of opportunity to, for you to learn from your peers and from um, your uh, professors that are doing some exceptional research. Um, we're a Division I university which means we're part of the Big Ten Conference. Uh, a lot of things that come with that including our 23 different uh, Division I varsity sports um, but more than that it kind of means that you're a part of something bigger than yourself and I'm sure that um, these three can kind of talk about uh, the spirit that comes along with uh, going to a Big Ten University. Um, and then the final thing I'm going to touch on quickly is our academics here. So we have 150 different majors and 135 different minors, over 135 minors. These are spread out across seven different freshman admitting colleges, which you probably at this point already know about our seven college system. Um, but the cool thing about that is you can actually take courses and minor across all the different colleges. So we have a breadth and depth of academics. We have have, um, opportunities inside and outside of the classroom um, and I, again I think our, our current students are going to talk quite a bit more about what that is uh, from a student perspective so if we could go ahead and have all of you introduce yourselves uh, maybe say your name your year your hometown and um, what college you're in okay. um, well, I'll start my name is Praticha I am a junior here at the U um, I'm from Mankato, Minnesota. I am in the College of Liberal Arts, so CLA for short, and I'm majoring in human physiology, going pre-med. Uh, uh, my name is Dewan. I'm from Chisago Lakes, Minnesota. I'm, from, or I'm in the Carlson School of Management, studying supply chain and operations management uh, and international business. Hi, my name is Cami. I'm a sophomore here at the U. Um, I'm from Becker, Minnesota originally, and I am in the Carlson School of Management, also studying supply chain operations management. Awesome. Um, so we've got a, a kind of a wide variety of interests here, um, aside from just what they're majoring in. So could we start off pretty broadly? Again, we have students here that uh, maybe have confirmed, maybe have yet, have yet to confirm. Um, but a good piece of information, I think, for everyone to know is kind of what um, what does a day in the life look like for you? Or maybe think back to first semester freshman year. What, what was kind of your schedule like? Um, I can start again. <laughs> um, so, a day in the life for me as a freshman, um, I've been, I had the pre-med track in my mind as a freshman and I'm still with it. So, with that ideal and lifestyle in my mind, I um, took a lot of science classes. Um, I was getting in a, in a lot of prereqs um, and liberal arts and liberal ed requirements out of the way, so I had those general chemistry classes and a general bio class thrown in there. Um, and it was a lot of just like waking up early and hit, hitting the pavement and putting in the time, the hours for it. Um, but it paid off, and also you are exposed and you're more inclined to go out. Um, onto campus and not hole up in your residence hall room and 
um, be a vampire basically. <laughs> you like wanted to go out and make new friends, um, specifically for me because of the living arrangements I had. So um, not only did I go to class and try to meet new people there, but I also found a lot of ways to make new friends because I was invested in the idea of being involved on campus and that's how I met a lot of friends. So that was just kind of my lifestyle. Um, for myself, uh, it it was a lot of just like figuring out like who I was and what I wanted um, because I'm actually, I'm a transfer uh, because I started out in the College of Liberal Arts and transferred to the Carlson School of Management. And so my freshman year was really figuring out like, do I really want to transfer to Carlson? If so, like what major? Um, and then with that being said, kind of like what you said is like going out and finding new friends and like different student groups and all of that. So uh, that was especially true during fall is just like, trying everything because there's so much to do here and I'm sure you guys can echo that mm -hmm. um, and then I guess spring for me was more just like academic grind like really like more classes like pick up the load because fall is like acclimating and yeah. yeah. I can talk a little bit about that as well so my freshman year uh, was really exciting so I I, my days were pretty much really similar each day. So I lived in Territory Hall, which has the Carlson Living Learning Community in it. Um, and I would strongly recommend like looking into LLCs or living learning communities. So everyone around me had really similar classes because um, it was more of an academic-based LLC. Um, and so with that, I like got ready, took a shower. Um, all my friends and I walked to the train. We rode the train to West Bank, went to class. Um, then like after our first class we had different schedules um, so then I like went to my next class or I went to the library study for a couple hours um, usually got lunch with some of them at the dining halls um, when I finished I went back home to my residence hall um, ate dining hall food with my friends again um, usually at night is when they have student group meetings and so on different nights of the week I had a student group meeting um, and then at the evenings is primarily like when I studied, and so that's when I like either went to the library again or into my lounge. Uh, if it was a heavier night, I did that. Otherwise, there's always people around all the time, and so I like made a home in my residence hall with all those people that lived around me. And usually, like sometimes we watch movies, played card games, tried a new restaurant on campus. So that's like what a day looked like for me during the weekday, um, and I found that really comforting, and just having a lot of people around me to support me. Yeah, awesome. Um, and Cammie already did kind of a good job of hitting on her residence life experience. Um, did all all of you live in the residence halls your freshman year? Yeah. yeah. So we don't require students to live um, in residence halls their freshman year, but 90% of them do. Um, and so we encourage it because I think it really uh, uh, helps create a smaller community. So you were in a living learning community, which you mentioned. Was anybody else? I was. Okay. So um, I was in the German, Dutch, and uh, Scandinavian LLC, which is located in Middleburg Hall, the one residence hall on West Bank. So if you're thinking about um, living in the residence hall, uh, Middlebrook is really good because it's right across the street from Carlson. Like you walk out the door and the building's right there. Um, but I lived in that one so we all um, happened to speak German. It was just really nice because then I could continue um, learning a language that I'm passionate about in a very like comforting and like open environment. So that's why I loved it. Awesome. I didn't live in a living <laughs> learning community, um, but I lived in Centennial Hall. It's primarily for um, students, um, that's not for students, it's primarily uh, single rooms. So I was placed into a single room, which wasn't um, necessarily my first choice, but um, they have a certain way that the housing um, uh, and residence life committee and board and decision making process, they have a certain way of placing students in residence halls and I wanted to be in Centennial Hall above like being in a, being with a roommate um, and that's why they placed me in there. Um, and yes, at first I was upset but um, that went away quickly after like a week because um, it pushed me to be more open and talk to a lot of people. Um, and try to make new friends. It's so hard no matter where you're coming from, whether it's a small town or a big city, whether it's Mankato, Minnesota, Chisago Lakes, Becker, Minnesota, or LA in California. Like it could be literally anywhere and it is terrifying even if you have a big support team coming with you. So it's, it can be very overwhelming, but um, being put into a situation where you just kind of have to fend for yourself 
for lack of a better word, and um, just kind of learn who you really are. And I learned that I do want to be outgoing and I want to make as many friends as I can to just have a large support system in all realms of my life here at the U. Um, that's what I learned, and I really, really benefited from being placed into this in a single room. So. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and you kind of mentioned, yeah, just generally the acclimation I think is difficult. No matter where you go to school, no matter what you're doing next year, I think it can be a tricky transition. Um, and the U of M is a really large school. We have 30,000 undergraduate students um, and even more when you're counting our graduate students as well. Um, so. Can you share, obviously all of you lived in residence halls, which I think helps shrink that community quite a bit, but um, could you share maybe more just about the campus in general? We have a large campus. Um, ha uh, some of it is in Minneapolis, split between the East Bank of the Mississippi River and the West Bank of the Mississippi River, and then um, the other chunk of it is in St. Paul. So uh, it's a large campus, and I think a lot of people get very nervous um, about that size. So can you talk maybe about how um, you got used to it, or how long it took you to navigate? I can start with that. Um, so I am from a small town, so I've never used like, public transportation before, um, never really been on a bus, so that was an exciting thing for me. So like the University of Minnesota has their own campus buses, and then Minneapolis, St. Paul have like the metro transit, so that's light rail or like city buses. And so like the first few weeks on campus, I like forced myself to try like the campus buses, um, do that right away. And then after that, it wasn't really scary or intimidating to like do that again and there's an app you can track when it's coming it tells you where it's going really handy um, so once I got that down campus was really easy to navigate and I was able to get around very easy everything's also on Google Maps so there's really no way you can get lost um, or like be totally struggling um, with the size of it for like amount of students I throughout after my first year I'd say every time I walk around I see someone I at the very least recognize if not know um, and I did not think that was going to happen at all, especially coming to such a large place. And I found that to be like so cool, even that in a large place, like it's such a small and connected world. Yeah, I mean, for me, like especially like taking a tour here, you're just so overwhelmed because you get exposed to a lot of the campus. Um, but uh, when I moved here um, after confirming, it was after a week, like campus felt very comfortable. It was just, oh, I can get to point A, to point B, to point C, no problem. So for those of you thinking of coming here, like it's probably about a week that you're like uncertain of yourself, but after that, you're completely comfortable and you should be able to, to be comfortable with yourself and where you're going, so. And I mean, Cami and Delon pretty much said what was on my mind, but um, just a little quick blurb. During orientation or welcome week, when you um, come here, you uh, spend, uh, well, during welcome week specifically for me, I remember going with whomever was in my welcome week group and we just made a day out of it and went to everybody's like areas for classes. So mm -hmm. I had a chemistry class in Smith Hall and I had no idea what Smith Hall was or what it looked like, where it was going to be. Um, and I grabbed my friends and we went. We And the buildings are generally open around that time. Um, because it's kind of like the first week before classes start. Um, so people are back on campus working, research, things like that. And it was really beneficial because I just got to kind of get the first day jitters of trying to figure out where to go and find my way to a certain classroom. I still showed up two hours early because I'm that kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a little less mm -hmm. terrifying knowing that I knew where I was going. Um, so you do get, get that opportunity. There's even like a whole day scheduled out for it. So it's really helpful. Awesome. Um, I've gotten quite a few questions um, that were submitted earlier and then a couple recently about safety in general. We are uh, located in a major metropolitan area, so um, obviously that means that there's a lot of people around, there's a lot of things to do, um, but I think sometimes when people are coming from maybe smaller towns um, are concerned about safety. Could any of you chat about that? I can start with that. Um, so I'm from a rural area. I just clicked the mic. Um, and so that was definitely something that I was nervous about. Um, but being on campus, everything is completely lit all the time. There's you'd never like a dark area. You're never like afraid someone's going to jump out. Um, and then so along with like that, there's always like safety officers patrolling. So like even at night when you're walking home late from like the library or friend's house, there's always like someone patrolling. 
Um, and if you like were worried about that, you can call 624 WALK, which is basically a phone number to get a security escort. So I used that in the summer um, when I was walking home after like a finished shift at work, um, just because I was going a little bit off campus. And so that was like really handy. And then also, since there are so many people that go here, there's always people walking around, so I'm never like alone at night. And so I've found that to be like, really helpful when concerned about safety. Yeah. Cam, you pretty much said. Yeah. Um, but there's also <laughs> Gopher Chauffeur. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> go off. I mean, Gopher Chauffeur is another option. I like to say it's like our Uber system on campus, um, which is dorky, so no one really says it. Um, but it, you just call it. It's a free service for you to use. They um, will drive you, I think, like like a mile off of campus. Um, so even when you're a sophomore, junior, or senior, and you decide to not live on campus anymore, um, they'll still drive you pretty much anywhere in the radius of campus, which is probably where you will choose to live. Um, so that's very helpful because you just call them a little ahead of time before you um, head out, and then you're good to go, and they'll pick you up pretty much anywhere, <laughs> really. And it's really, really helpful, I've, I've noticed. so. Mm -hmm. I'll also say too, um, we're a part of the city and we're integrated into the city in a lot of ways, but it definitely does feel like a campus. Mm -hmm. It feels like we are kind of our own community. Mm -hmm. um, we bleed into the community a lot um, in the surrounding neighborhoods. Often people forget that they're not technically a part of the U, but um, in general I would say it definitely feels um, like people are looking out for each other here, mm -hmm. certainly. Um, okay, I just got another question about, um, is anyone here double majoring? I am. Okay, awesome. So if you could chat a little bit about double majoring and then do any of you have minors? I will be like adding a double and a minor by the time I graduate. Perfect. Okay, so we'll start with you with yeah. the current situation and then you talk about your process. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, so double majoring, uh, it's just, I mean the process of getting there is just like figuring out like do you want to double major and I mean obviously in my case I was like yes I absolutely want to. Um, so it's absolutely possible like don't think it's impossible. You can also tack on minors to double majors. It's just, um, if you want to do it, just really work with your advisor. Talk with them a lot. And um, we have a service called Grad Planner. And so Grad Planner, you can um, like click like what you're majoring in and um, it'll show you like all the requirements for that major. And then um, you can like schedule out like which classes will work for that major. And so um, I utilize Grad Planner a lot, so I could like personally see, can I graduate in four years while double, double majoring? And the answer is yes. And then like, I again worked with my advisor a lot. So it's absolutely possible. Um, just be proactive about it. Yeah, so very like, similar um, with planning. It's more like deciding like, what you're interested in. So I had always like planned a double major, and I thought I was going to be like a supply chain and finance double major with a business analytics minor. Uh, but I took the finance intro class, and it wasn't really my thing. Um, so like right now, I'm kind of in the process of deciding what I want to double major in. Um, if I didn't double major or minor, I could be done with my major for supply chain this coming fall. Um, and I want to stay all four years, because it's four years you don't get back. Um, such a small amount of time in like the grand scheme of things. So um, it's definitely possible and like a lot of students I know like have the opportunity to and like sometimes choose to, otherwise you could always graduate early as well, um, kind of whatever you're interested in. Um, it's more like just taking an introductory course and seeing if it's the right fit for you um, if you want to pursue that. Awesome. Um, kind of going off of that, I know you're all in different years here, so you might have different answers to this, but do you have a favorite class that you've taken so far? Well, uh, I'm split because I love my language classes, um, but also like uh, um, corporate ethics uh, management 1005 with Rand Park is also fantastic because he's just, I don't know, he's a goofy professor and I love him. Mm -hmm. I was going to echo that, but I have another <laughs> favorite one. Um, so I took geology and cinema. Um, I also took that class. Yes, wonderful <laughs> class. It integrates science and movies. You get to watch movies in class. Uh, so it's like really interesting and a great way to like fulfill a requirement in a fun way. Um, so that was one of my favorite classes that I took my freshman year. Awesome. Um, I take orchestra, and that's mm -hmm. that's actually a class here, um, which is really exciting. Um, because it's not just like an extracurricular activity that you can be a part of, although it feels like that. Um, but it is a class, you get credit for it. Um, and I really appreciate it because I've been playing for uh, the violin for 
basically my whole life. So it's nice to incorporate that into my lifestyle here. Plus the conductors are really quirky and fun. There's one guy with a massive like hairdo going on and it's just so funny to watch him bang his head to classical music for mm. some reason. It's, just, it's a really fun class. You get to hang out with your friends and play some really cool music. So if any of you guys listening and watching are interested in being a part of choir, band, or orchestra, definitely join, make the time for it, you get credit for it, and it's, it's fun. You make new friends that way. So. Awesome. Bouncing off that, I took a band class as well, um, and I, I didn't think that was an option, but it really is, and so just like ask mm -hmm. your advisor about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, one other quick question. Um, we deal with a lot of students on the admission side who are interested in a lot of different things, so we admit you directly to one of the seven colleges, um, but I think we have uh, perfect examples here of students who were interested in one college and then ended up transferring. So how easy is it to transfer between colleges once you're a student here? Um, it's easy, again, if you're proactive on it. So in my case, I knew right away that I wanted to transfer, and that was just because um, I didn't get into my first choice college coming here as a freshman. So um, right from the get-go, um, I talked to my advisor. I was like, hey, I want to actually move to this college. And she, again, she was my number one cheerleader. I couldn't have asked for a better advisor because she just helped me along the way um, and really guided me. Um, so it's easy, but um, I guess like requirements for transferring to each college are going to look different. So you just got to, I don't know, I guess being proactive is the best, best thing to do. In addition to that, this isn't my like, personal um, experience, but I know people who like didn't know that they wanted to transfer and went from something like genetics to like business and transferred in um, like their junior year. Um, so it's like definitely possible for like whatever you're interested in. Um, you just kind of have to make that work and like they're graduating on time um, so that, that's like a concern as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, okay, so we've chatted a bit about academics. I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Um, what are some things that people do for fun while they're here on campus? So one thing that I did recently, so we kind of talked about how we're in Minneapolis-St. Paul um, in like a Big Ten school. So the Final Four was just Ooh. here. This, past couple weekends. Um, so my like, friends from my residence hall that I made, um, we like went to a lot of, like the Final Four events. So Minneapolis is like, great because there's always different things happening in the area, um, whether it's like the Super Bowl or Final Four or um, just like different events and festivals. And so that's something that I was like really interested in coming here and like why location was super important to me. I would echo that with like just like the thriving cities. Like there's always mm -hmm. something to do. Like um, I'm big into theater, and so um, Minneapolis is obviously great for that. With like the Guthrie and the Orpheum, and you know the State Theater, and so many more. But then also, I just think we have a thriving campus itself. So freshman year, I was very, very much. Uh, um, involved in student groups so I was in like admissions ambassadors so giving tours here and then TEDx UMN so for those of you who watch TED talks out there we have like a UMN chapter so you can actually like help create a TED talk which is absolutely incredible um, so like for things to do it's just there's a lot to do in the cities but like don't forget about the stuff on campus as well mm -hmm. yeah there are a lot of events happening on campus um, we have a ton of acapella groups and Ooh. it's um, a lot of their events sometimes are free so you get to go watch some amazing singers perform just with their mouths which <laughs> I think is so cool. Um, and then we have a lot of like dance performances. Um, the there's I don't remember what they're specifically called um, but it's like the Indians Indian Dance Association here at the university um, and we had a big old national competition basically held at our wonderful Northrop Auditorium here on campus um, and that was a big event they gave out like free food and the tickets were pretty cheap so I guess not free but you know <laughs> you know what I'm saying and um, it was really really fun and I heard awesome things about it and we have tons of performers that come to campus mm -hmm. like we had John Mulaney here and other people and things like that um, and also, you know, I'm also involved in a student group, so um, whether it's just for fun, whether it's academic related, there are lots of things to do on campus. Awesome. Um, and would you say that that has continued? Because are any of you still living on campus right now as upperclassmen? I am. Okay, awesome. Um, would you say that those of you that don't live on campus, do you still feel like you're integrated in campus life? 
I would yeah. I can go first. Yeah, I would say definitely. Um, another thing I did mention is like we have free bingo on campus. You can really yeah. cool prizes. <laughs> I go to bingo like every week. Cammy <laughs> 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 loves bingo. Too. Yeah, so I really do. Was bingo last week? I missed last week. <gasps> no, I know. Stop. I'm going tomorrow though. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> so there's always like events like that, um, and like the student union and the student board of activities and. Um, like hosts like Spring Jam and so that's something that no matter like where you live or it's on campus or off a lot of students like come together for mm -hmm. which is like a concert and event um, held in the spring like similar to homecoming in the fall um, and like since I am on campus every day for classes there's never I'm never like too far away I'm like always accessible to get anywhere I need to yeah and if you're if you start off like as a freshman or like very very early in the semester of your sophomore year or really any time um, with a student group and you kind of network your way up to like a board position or something um, it's much easier to feel more integrated in with campus because you spend a lot more time on campus trying to be involved with that student group and help out um, so in regards to just um, having like a bigger presence on campus for a specific group of people that's um, a good way to stay kind of connected um, with campus if you're living off campus. So. Awesome. Um, I have a specific question for you. Uh, uh, she mentioned that she lived in a single room her freshman year and a question is how did you make friends while living in a single in a dorm? Um, and then we have I think maybe someone who is planning on being in a single next year so um, maybe just sure. chat about that. Yeah so I'm not gonna lie I cried a lot <laughs> when I first came here um, because it was pretty scary um, to be placed into a single room because um, sometimes if for the person that is doing it by choice that's awesome go you because um, you know you already know what you want but if you are placed in a single and that isn't your first choice that can be kind of a letdown um, but do not fret because um, like I just said I cried a lot so um, it's not like I was I was just jumping up and down for joy but I did mention it earlier how I found a way to um, make friends and the way I did that if you want like a couple helpful tips um, it's like I just kept my door open um, I actually I think I remember um, for Centennial Hall they might have changed like the structure of the building in general but I remember one of like the events that our CAs so community advisors um, they're they're just people in your residence hall that um, are there to help you um, acclimate to the campus specifically your hallway um, they're gonna take care of they're generally upperclassmen they take care of like maybe 30 students um, specifically sometimes more sometimes less um, and one of the events they held for um, one of my CAs held um, was a painting like a brick like so they gave us free bricks and we got to <laughs> paint them specifically um, and mine was ugly but I put it it was to, so that we could prop our doors open so when I say that it, the structure might be different because they might have created different doors that might be different um, but one that was a great way for me to get involved with other people that I also had to paint bricks and two I got to plop it down and just have my door open and um, make my messy room you know because move in um, a little less messy and just talk to people that also had their doors open um, it gave me the ability to mingle and talk to people and that was really helpful plus Everyone doesn't know everyone when they come to college. A lot of students that are in high school right now and you're graduating, that kind of thing, you probably knew a lot of people that you went to high, started high school with because you went to middle school and elementary school with them. Um, and sometimes that doesn't happen here. For sure it doesn't happen all the yeah. time here. So everyone's kind of in the same boat. They're all thinking, I don't know anyone. So I have to talk to everyone. Um, and you find people that are, were super shy in high school to me super very excited to talk to literally everyone um, so it's it's not impossible if you're a little worried about it try not to be it's okay to be worried but try not to be and just have the confidence in yourself that you will make at least one friend you'll probably make thousands but mm -hmm. at least one 
And I think I can also probably say that um, it, sometimes you might be best friends with your freshman year roommate if you do have a roommate. I would say that's not often the case, that it's the, your best friend for all four years. So your, your first year living situation is great um, and will be definitely a community for you, but it is not the end all be all and you will find community elsewhere too, um, no matter what you do. Um, okay, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit because we have some people here probably that have yet to decide where they wanna go. The time is ticking, but they uh, have yet to decide. Um, so when you all were searching for schools, um, what set the U of M apart for you? I can start with that one. Yeah. Um, so I was primarily choosing between here and Madison, uh, just because they are like very similar schools, uh, both Big Ten, both large universities. Um, and so what I looked at for me was like my program. Um, so I was interested in business, and Carlson's business school typically ranks higher um, than Madison's. And then that was, that was like part of it, part of it was academics. The other part was location. So Minneapolis, like our campus is located in Minneapolis, St. Paul, which has the most Fortune 500 companies per capita in the entire U.S. And so looking for opportunities as an undergrad for internships, um, as well as after graduation for full-time offers, that was probably where I would like to be um, just for creating those opportunities. And that's regardless of your major, not just business, because um, they're in a variety of different industries. And then also related to location was all the different things happening. So I wanted to be in like a big place because I was from somewhere that was so small. Um, and Madison is a larger city, but it's not all that urban. Um, and so that wasn't exactly the right fit for me. Um, other things, besides academics, I like to do fun things as well. <laughs> uh, and I love um, like going to sports. And so like that Big Ten culture um, was really, really a huge kind of pull for me. Yeah. I would echo everything that you just said. <laughs> and then, like, aside from that, so um, I also, Chicago Lakes is a super small town. And so when I was touring colleges, I was like, small town, or small college is definitely where I'm going to be. So I toured, like, upwards of, like, ten small colleges, and no, none of them, like, felt like home. And right off the start from, like, getting on campus and then taking a tour here, I just knew, like, after a tour here, I knew this was the place for me. So I don't know, it's just kind of like, it was like an instinct for me, I guess. Um, finances was also like a big part for me. Um, as an in-state student, you get in-state tuition. Um, so that was really helpful for me um, in deciding. Uh, but also, I mean, that was more of my parents' um, this, uh, like thoughts and ideas. But uh, for me, very personally, I, I like to think big picture because I like to plan things um, and I've known that I wanted to be a doctor for a while um, and I've still stuck with it so yay um, but planning to go to a uh, university sometimes takes a little more thought um, in regards to what you kind of want to do like big picture end game that kind of thing um, you don't have to have anything decided right now um, just for me that's what um, my train of thought was and the U University of Minnesota has an amazing medical school program um, students that go to med school here sometimes get matched for residency which is like the next step in the med school in the medical school process basically um, at like Harvard and um, Yale and really amazing top rated schools um, so we have a great program here and I really wanted to try to be a part of that and I just thought being here already on campus um, and living my life here at the University of Minnesota would just make me feel a lot more inclined to apply so, yeah. Awesome. Um, that kind of leads me into my next question. We have some students that are um, already, I mean, they're thinking about where they're going to go to school next year, which is great, and they're already thinking about their career afterwards. So congrats to you if, that's, uh, if you're that forward thinking. Um, how do you think the um, U of M has prepared you for a future career, whether that be through internships or research um, that you're doing right now? Well, um, I would just like echo that. Like we do have internship and research um, opportunity program or yeah opportunities, um, especially like research. I mean, we are a research institution, so it's kind of like our bread and butter. So, and you can do research on pretty much any subject. So, mm -hmm. whether it be like I, I don't know any subject, um, but then also like uh, take part in like. Um, 
like career services. So like u utilizing like resume and cover letter help, whether it be through like Carlson's Undergraduate Business Career Center or CLA's um, uh, Career Center, and um, like start getting those professional skills. So there's like mock interviews that you can do or things like that. So um, like it's like honing more of your professional skills than your academic skills, which like we offer here, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. I can talk a little bit um, about that. So um, I would say that I've been prepared for like after graduation incredibly well. Um, so like Delon kind of touched on a lot of like the career services. Um, for my experience, I, most student groups are like bringing in professionals. Um, so like I'm in women in business and so there's networking events every semester. Um, we have speakers from different companies. You can connect with them. Um, I like so that's like opportunities on campus. Uh, otherwise, there's so many different ways to network into different internships or careers that you like to. Um, so like I'm a sophomore and I've had like a nine month long internship, um, which is not super common. Most people get like the this isn't a premier internship, but like get a premier internship um, before their like after their junior year that summer um, before their senior year. Um, so like I'll be sitting very well uh, for when that time comes for me. Um, just because I've prepared and got a lot of different experiences. But those experiences can come from so many different ways. It doesn't have to be like an internship. Um, it can be like any position on campus, any job on campus, um, research as well. And like Cam said, she, like she's in Women in Business, and um, I know I like mentioned it um, more than once, mm -hmm. um, that I'm in, also in a student group. Um, and I'm in like the, like, the pre-med American Medical Student Association. It's also a national <coughs> organization. Um, so if you are going pre-med and you do choose to come here, definitely try to join that student. I'm not trying to recruit. Um, <laughs> I am also trying to recruit because I'm on the executive board, so you know. Um, but um, it is a great student group and like Cami said, like in Women in Business, they have speakers come in, we do the same thing. We have physicians come in, We've had, we have admissions board um, people from the University of Minnesota's Medical School um, admissions board come in and they speak. And it's a great way to gain opportunities, not only on campus, but also in the area, in the healthcare field. Um, and I've also volunteered a lot through that student group. Um, so I'm also giving back to the community, which is very, very important to me. Um, so, and it's also very, very important for anyone that wants to go into the pre-health sector. It looks really good to see that you're trying to give back to the community, because that's kind of the job description. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll, you'd be surprised by how many, um, I don't want to use the word over and over again, but opportunities that you'll have mm -hmm. here at the university. Um, just putting one little toe out there and saying, hey, I'm interested, can lead you a long way. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep an open mind and um, take those um, times where you, uh, like the downtime that you have as a freshman, I think is very, very important. Um, there are lots of career fairs and um, ex Explore You is a really fun one for student mm -hmm. groups. It's a great way to try to be invol involved in ca on campus and in companies around the cities. Um, and no, you don't have to have anything figured out as a freshman, but it is a good idea to just try to see what's going on and see what's important to you. Um, and those are some really cool things for you to check out. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've talked about um, some of the opportunities that we have over all four years, but we're going to kind of bring it back before we end here. Um, what are some things that you think every freshman at the U of M should experience? Maybe one thing. Take a second if you need to think about that. I want to start. This is not very serious. Um, <laughs> But if you get Flexstein with your meal plan, don't use it all your first <laughs> semester, okay? Spread that out. Um, yeah. I had a ton of Flexstein. I use it all my first year. I could be eating so much better the second year. <laughs> so that's just a small tidbit. I'll come up with something for real. Do you want to quickly explain how the meal plans work? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Um, so if you live in a residence hall, you're required to have a meal plan. Um, you can do 11, 14, or unlimited. And then it's a la carte style, so you just go into the dining hall, they use a swipe, you can eat as much as you want for as long as you want. Um, you can, like take a to-go box if you're feeling it. Um, so they feed you really well here. Um, and then it's like swipes, they don't roll over, so after the end of the week, that's it. And then on top of that, you get flex dine. You automatically start with about $100, I believe. You can add more, like if you would like to or if your family would like to. And then that, you can use at any restaurant on campus. So they have like Pan Express, Chick-fil-A. Um, Caribou, Starbucks, 
um, it's like convenience stores around the campus as well. So hold that tight. Don't use it all. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess I don't know if I have a specific event that freshmen should attend, but I guess I would just say like be brave enough to attend events because I've known too many people that, especially their freshman year, they just kind of like got held up in their room and so um, I'm very much uh, an outgoing person and love to experience things so I would just I guess like challenge you guys for whatever campus you do go to is to take all the opportunities that we offer here and just try everything because I feel like you freshmen have a little bit more time on your hands. I mean, I know I did, because I was getting acclimated to college life and taking less credits. Mm -hmm. So just really explore and figure yourself out and try new things. Mm -hmm. um, go to homecoming. Mm -hmm. I loved homecoming. I loved it so much that I was on the royalty court. So mm -hmm. be involved is a good one. Um, and homecoming is awesome here. We have tons of events literally happening happening all the time, literally every day of that week. Um, from blood drive, so get back to the community, yay, <laughs> um, to corn roasts. We literally have like a seven hour block where we just roast corn o over on our beautiful St. Paul campus where you can get freshly homemade ice cream. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to exemplify that. Um, and uh, eat corn for free, I believe, actually. Um, and then we end uh, the week with a concert. Um, my freshman year, it was Kesha, so rock on. Um, <laughs> and you end the week with that, and then the next day you get to watch um, our gopher football team um, row the boat and win homecoming, hopefully. Um, so that's awesome. And the amount of school spirit that, if you think your school has school spirit, um, like in high school, you are. You don't even know. You don't You're even not know. Prepared. You're it still is, not prepared. <laughs> you are not prepared. Like, the amount of times I hear row the boat, which is like a very common saying for our gopher football team here, um, during that week, it, I, it's countless and it's beautiful. It's beautiful outside. It's warm. It's that time of the year where the leaves are changing, but it's not awful and people are just very friendly with each other because everyone wants to know each other. It's a good old time, go to homecoming. Mm -hmm. Awesome, and I think um, she touched on something important too. There is a massive amount of school spirit here. Um, I'm saying this as a semi-outsider. <laughs> I think um, no matter what, no matter if you're into athletics, if you're not into athletics, if you are here just to study, if you're here to study and have fun, no matter what your intentions are, um, everyone here, it really does feel like you're part of something bigger, um, and I think, um, Part of the beauty of being in a Big Ten institution is that, but I think it's also um, something about the U of M. I th it feels <laughs> yeah. pretty exceptional. Yeah. Um, like we didn't tell him to wear a U like a go for shirt right now, right? I think in general you walk around, people are consistently in gear, people yeah. are um, just have a good attitude uh, every day of the week. So um, I think it's a fun place to be and. Um, there's a massive community. Um, I am going to go over a couple things because I think we're pretty close on time here. Um, if you're watching and you have confirmed to the University of Minnesota, congratulations. Um, yeah, we're excited for you. We're excited to have you here. Um, if you come next year, you'll see all of us, in fact. Um, if you have yet to confirm, you have until May 1st. And that's not just with us. That's with pretty much any uh, uh, university or college in the nation. So um, you have until May 1st to do so to reserve your spot here on campus. Also, you have until May 1st to fill out your housing application. So if you have yet to fill out your housing application, um, you should do so. We guarantee you to have a spot on campus um, if you do fill out by May 1st. If you do not fill out by May 1st, we do not guarantee anymore. And we encourage you to do it as soon as possible because it's a, a first come first serve basis for living learning communities and for your residence halls. Um, you can fill out the ha housing application before you've actually confirmed too. So if you're still deciding between us and somewhere else or a couple other places, but we're still in your top choices, we, su we suggest filling that housing application out. Um, other than that, my other biggest piece of advice is if you have yet to get on campus and and you are able to get on campus because um, you don't necessarily know what the vibe is or what you're going to like and what you're not going to like until you're here. Um, we've got three fantastic tour guides here that you might actually interact with. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we encourage you to get on campus. Um, any final words before we go off the air here? Uh, enjoy your time in college. You know, be happy. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> 
go go subscribe. Yeah, go the boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining. Um, this broadcast has been recorded too, so if you have friends that weren't able to watch or there's some things that we said that you didn't catch, um, we'll have a link for it later so you can watch it back again. Um, and other than that, have a wonderful night and thank you for tuning in.